I believe it's recording. Uh, is it? Is it? Are you? Yep. Yes, it is. Hello, all, and welcome <laughs> to today's tour portion. Before I get started, I'm not going to miss today's blessing because I'm going to do it now. <laughs> Blessed art thou, Donai Lehi, you King of the Universe, who has sanctified us with His commandments and commanded us to engross ourselves with the words of Torah. Please, Donai Lehi, you see the words of your Torah in their mouths and in the mouth. Of all your people, Israel, may we know offspring, the offspring of your people. The house of Israel, may we all together know your name and study your Torah for sake fulfilling your desire. Blessed are you, Adonai, who teaches Torah to his people, Israel. Blessed are you, Adonai, Elohim, new king of the universe, who chose us from all the nations and gave us the Torah. Blessed are you, Adonai, giver of the Torah. May Adonai bless you and keep watch over you. May Adonai make his presence to you and you may be kind to you. May Adonai bestow favor on you and grant you peace. Today's, I believe, is called Vaikra. It was supposed to be done on the new year of the lunar calendar, and I messed up and missed a read. So, yeah, that's what yesterday's was. Today is Vaikra. He called. And our read is Leviticus 1 1 through 5 26, and 1 Samuel 15 2 through 34. Yahweh called Moses and spoke to him from the tent of meeting, saying, Speak to the people of Israel and say to them, When any one of you brings an offering to Yahweh, you shall bring your offering of livestock from the herd or from the flock. If his offering is a burnt offering from the herd, he shall offer a male without blemish. He shall bring it to the entrance of the tent of meeting, and he shall, and he may be accepted before Yahweh. He shall lay his hand on the head of the burnt offering, and it shall be accepted for him to make atonement for him. Then he shall kill the bull before Yahweh. And Aaron's sons, the priest, shall take, sorry, shall bring the blood and throw it against the sides of the altar that is in the entrance of the tent of meeting. Then he shall flay the burnt offering and cut it into pieces. And the sons of Aaron, the, the priest, shall put fire on the altar and arrange wood on the fire. And Aaron's sons, the priest, shall arrange pieces, the head and the fat, on the wood that is on the fire in the altar, but its entrails, its legs, he shall wash with water, and the priest shall burn all of it on the altar as a burnt offering, a food offering, with a pleasing aroma to Yahweh. If his gift for a burnt offering is from the flock, from the sheep or goats, he shall bring a male without blemish, and he shall kill it on the north side of the altar before Yahweh and Aaron's sons. The priest shall throw its blood against the sides of the altar, and he shall cut it into pieces with its head and its fat, and the priest shall arrange them on the wood that is on the fire of the altar, but the entrails its legs shall wash, he shall wash with water, and the priest shall offer all of it and burn it on the altar. It is a burnt offering, a food offering with a pleasing aroma to Yahweh. If his offering to Yahweh is a burnt offering of birds, then he shall bring his offering of turtle doves or pigeons. And the priest shall bring it to the altar and wring off its head and burn it on the altar. Its blood shall be drained out on the north side of the altar. He shall remove its crop with its contents and cast it beside the altar on the east side in a place for ashes. He shall tear it open by its wings, but shall not sever it completely, and the priest shall burn it on the altar, on the wood that is on the fire. It is a burnt offering, a food offering with a pleasing aroma to Yahweh. When anyone brings a grain offering as an offering to Yahweh, his offering shall be of fine flour. He shall pour oil on it and put frankincense on it, and bring it to Aaron's sons, the priests, and he shall take it, take from it a handful of the flour and oil with all its franken, frankincense. And the priest shall burn this as a memorial portion on the altar, a food offering with a pleasing aroma to Yahweh, but the rest of the grain offering shall be 
for Aaron and his sons. It is a most holy part of Yahweh's food offering. When you bring a grain offering baked in the oven as an offering, it shall be unleavened loaves of fine flour mixed with oil or unleavened wafers smeared with oil. And if you offer a, offer as a grain offering baked on a griddle, it shall be of fine flour and leaven mixed with oil, and you shall break it in pieces and pour oil on, on it. It is a grain offering, and if your offering is a grain offering cooked in a pan, it shall be made of fine flour with oil, and you shall bring the grain offering that has made these things to Yahweh. And when it is presented to the priest, he shall bring it to the altar, and the priest shall take from the grain offering its memorial portion and burn this on the altar a food offering with a pleasing aroma to Yahweh but the rest of the grain offering shall be for Aaron and his sons it is a most holy part of Yahweh's food offering no grain offering that you bring to Yahweh shall be made with leavening for if you shall burn no leaven sorry for you shall burn no leaven nor any honey as a food offering to Yahweh as an offering of first fruits, you may bring them the offer, but they shall not be offered on the altar for a pleasing aroma. You shall season all your grain offerings with salt, and you shall not let the salt of the covenant of the co covenant with your Elohim be missing from your grain offering. And with all your offerings, you shall offer salt. If you offer a grain offering of first fruits, the Yahweh shall offer for the grain offering of your first fruits fresh ears roasted with fire crushed new grain and you shall put oil on it and lay frankincense on it it is a grain offering and the priest shall burn it as a memorial a portion some of the crushed grain and some of the oil with it with all its frankincense it is a food offering to Yahweh if his offering is a sacrifice of peace offering if he offers an animal from the herd male or female he shall offer it without blemish before Yahweh and he shall lay his hand on the head of his offering and kill it at the entrance of the tent of meeting. And Aaron's sons, the priest, shall throw the blood against the sides of the altar. And from the sacrifice of the peace offering as a food offering to Yahweh, he shall offer the fat covenant covering the entrails and all the fat that is on the entrails. And the two kidneys with the fat that is on them at the loins. And the long loaf of the liver that he shall remove with the kidneys. Then Aaron's son shall burn it on top of the altar, on top of the burnt offering, which is on the which is on the wood of the fire. It is a food offering with a pleasing aroma to Yahweh. If it's offering for a sacrifice as a peace offering to Yahweh, it is an animal from the flock, male or female. He shall offer it without blemish. If he offers a lamb for his offering, then he shall offer it before Yahweh lays hand on his head of his offering and kill it in front of the tent of meeting. And Aaron's son shall throw its blood against the sides of the altar. Then from the sacrifice of the peace offering, he shall offer his food offering to Yahweh its fat. He shall remove the whole fat tail cut off close to the backbone. And the fat that covers the entrails and all the fat that is on the entrails and the two kidneys with the fat that is on them, the at the loins and the long lobe of the liver that he shall remove with the kidneys. And the priest shall burn it on the altar as a food offering to Yahweh. <coughs> if his offering is a goat, then he shall offer it before Yahweh and lay his hand on its head and kill it in front of the tent of meeting. And the sons of Aaron shall throw its blood against the sides of the altar and he shall offer from it. As his offering for a food offering to Yahweh, the fat covering the entrails and all the fat that is on the entrails and the two kidneys with the fat that is on them at the loins and the long lobe of the livers, he that he shall remove with the kidneys. And the priest shall burn them on the altar as a food offering with a pleasing aroma. All fat is Yahweh's. It shall be a statute forever throughout all your generations and all your dwelling places that you eat neither fat nor blood. And Yahweh spoke to Moses, saying, Speak to the people of Israel, saying, If anyone sins unintentionally in any of Yahweh's commandments about things not to be done, and does any one of them, if it is the anointed priest who sins, thus bringing guilt on the people, <coughs> then he shall offer for the sin that he's committed a bull from the herd without blemish to Yahweh for a sin offering. He shall bring the bull to the entrance and attend the meeting before Yahweh and lay his hand on the head of the bull and kill the bull before Yahweh. 
An anointed priest shall take some of the blood of the bull and bring it into the tent of meeting, and the priest shall dig his finger in, dip his finger in the blood and sprinkle part of the blood seven times before Yahweh in the sin, in front of the veil of the sanctuary. And the priest shall put some of the blood on the horns of the altar of fra fragrant incense before Yahweh that is on the tent of the meeting. And all the rest of the blood of the bull sh he shall pour at the base of the altar of burnt offerings, that is, at the entrance of the tent of meeting. And all the fat of the bull and the sin offering he shall remove from it the fat that covers the entrails, and all the fat that is on the entrails and the two kidneys with the fat that is on them and the loins and the long lobe of the liver that he shall remove with the kidneys. Just as these were taken from the ox of the sacrifice of the peace offerings, and the priest shall burn them on the altar of burnt offering. But the skin of the bull and all its flesh, its head, its legs, its entrails, and its dung, all the rest of the bull, he shall carry outside the camp to a clean place to the ash heap, and he shall burn it up on a fire of wood. On the, hash, on the ash heap it shall be burned up. If the whole congregation of Israel sins unintentionally, and the things is hidden from the eyes of the assembly, and they do... Any one of the things that Yahweh's commandments ought not to be done, and they realize their guilt, when the sin which they have committed becomes known, the assembly shall offer a bull from the herd for a sin offering and bring it in front of the tender meeting, and the elders of the congregation shall lay their hands on the head of the bull before Yahweh, and the bull shall be killed before Yahweh. Then the anointing the anointed priest shall bring some of the blood of the bull into the tent of meeting, and the priest shall dip his finger in the blood and sprinkle it seven times before Yahweh in front of the veil. And he shall put some of the blood <coughs> on the horns of the altar that is in the tent of the meeting before Yahweh and the rest of the blood. He shall pour out at the base of the altar of burnt offerings. That is at the entrance of the tent of meeting. And all its fat he shall take from it and burn on the altar. Thus shall he do with the bull as he did with the bull of sin offering so shall he do with this and the priest shall make atonement for them and they shall be forgiven and he shall carry the bull outside the camp and burn it up as he burned up the first bull it is the sin offering for the assembly if any one of the common people sins unintentionally in doing any of the things that by Yahweh's commandments ought not to be done and realizes his guilt, or the sin which he has committed is made known to him. He shall bring for his offering a goat, a female without blemish, for a sin which he has committed. And he shall lay his hand on the head of the sin offering, and kill the sin offering in the place of the burnt offering. And the priest shall take some of its blood with his fingers, and put it on the horns of the altar, the burnt offering, and pour out all the rest of its blood at the base of the altar, and all its fat. He shall remove as a fat is removed from the peace offerings, and the priest shall burn it on the altar for a pleasing aroma to Yahweh, and the priest shall make atonement for him, and he shall be forgiven. <coughs> if he brings a lamb as his offering for his sin offering, he shall bring a female without blemish, and lay his hand on the head of the sin offering, and kill it for his sin offering in a place where they kill the burnt offering. And the priest shall take some of the blood of the sin offering with his finger and put it on the horns of the altar of the burnt offering and pour out all the rest of its blood at the base of the altar. All its fat he shall remove as the fat of the lamb is removed from the sacrifice of the peace offerings. And the priest shall burn it up on the altar, burn it on the altar, on top of Yahweh's food offerings. And the priest shall make atonement for him for the sin which he has committed. He shall be forgiven. If anyone sins and that he hears a public adjuration to testify, and though he is a witness whether he has seen or come to know the matter, yet does not speak, he shall bear his iniquity. Or if anyone touches an unclean thing, whether a carcass of an unclean wild animal, or a car carcass of an unclean livestock, or a carcass of an unclean swarming thing, and it is hidden from him, and he has become unclean, and he realizes his guilt, or if he touches human uncleanliness, or whatever sort of uncleanliness. <coughs> may be with which one becomes unclean, and it is hidden from him when he comes to know it and realizes guilt, or if anyone utters with his lips a rash oath to do evil or to do good, 
any sort of rash oath that people swear and it is hidden from him when he comes to know it and he realizes guilt of any of these. When he realizes guilt in any of these and confesses the sin that he has committed, he shall bring to Yahweh as his compensation for the sin that he has committed a female from the flock, a lamb or a goat for a sin offering, and the priest shall make atonement for him for his sins. But, but if he cannot afford the lamb, then he shall bring to Yahweh as his compensation for the sin that he has committed two turtle doves or two pigeons, one for a sin offering and the other for a burnt offering, and he shall bring them to the priest who shall offer first offer first the one for a sin offering, and he shall wring its head from its neck, but shall not sever it completely. And he shall sprinkle some of the blood of the sin offering on the side of the altar, while the rest of the blood he sh shall be drained at the base of the altar. It is a sin offering. Then he shall offer the second for a burnt offering according to the rule, and the priest shall make atonement for him. For the sin that he has committed, and he shall be forgiven. But if he cannot afford two turtle doves or two pigeons, then he shall bring as his offering for the sin that he has committed a tenth of an ephah of fine flour for an offering. He shall put no oil on it, and shall put no frank fra frankincense on it. For it is a sin offering, and he shall bring it to the priest, and the priest shall take a handful of it as a memorial portion. And burn this on the altar, on Yahweh's food offerings. It is a sin offering. Thus the priest shall make atonement for him for the sin which he has committed in any one of these things. And he shall be forgiven, and the remainder shall be for the priest, as in the grain offering. <coughs> Yahweh spoke to Moses, saying, If anyone commits a breach of faith and sins unintentionally in any of the holy things of Yahweh, he shall bring to Yahweh as his compensation a ram without blemish, out of the flock valued in silver shekels, according to a shekel of sanctuary for a guilt offering. He shall also make restitution for what he has done amiss in the holy thing, and shall add a fifth to it, and give it to the priests, and the priests shall make atonement for him with the ram of the guilt offering. And he shall be forgiven. If anyone sins, doing any of the things that Yahweh commands ought not to be done, then he did not, though he did not know it, then realizes his guilt, he shall bear his iniquity. He shall bring to the priest a ram without blemish out of the flock or its equivalent for a guilt offering. And the priest shall make atonement for him for the mistake that he made unintentionally. And he shall be forgiven at his guilt offering. He has indeed incurred guilt before Yahweh. Yahweh spoke to Moses, saying, If anyone sins, doing any of the things that Yahweh's commandments ought not to be done, though he did not know it and realize his guilt, he shall bear in his, his iniquity. He shall bring to the priest a ram without blemish out of the flock or its equivalent for a guilt offering, and the priest shall make atonement for him. For the mistake that he made unintentionally, he shall be forgiven. It is a guilt offering. He has indeed incurred guilt before Yahweh. Sorry if I repeated that one. Yahweh spoke to Moses saying, If anyone sins and commits a breach of faith against Yahweh by deceiving his neighbor in a matter of deposit or security, or through robbery, or if he has oppressed his neighbor, or has found something lost and lied about it, swearing falsely in any of these things that people do, and sin thereby, if he has sinned and has realized his guilt, and will restore what he took by robbery or what he got by oppression, or the deposit that was committed to him, or the lost thing that he has found, or anything about which he has sworn falsely, he shall restore it in full, and shall add a fifth to it, and give it to him to whom it belongs on the day he realizes his guilt. He shall bring to the priest as his compensation to Yahweh ram without blemish out of the flock or its equivalent for a guilt offering, and the priest shall make atonement for him before Yahweh. And he shall be forgiven for any of the things that one may do and thereby become guilty. One Samuel two through thirty four thus says Yahweh of hosts I have noted that <coughs> Excuse me. I have noted what Imelech did to Israel in oppressing them on the way 
when they came out up out of Egypt. Now go and strike Amalek and devote to destruction all that they have. Do not spare them, but kill both man, man and woman, child and infant, ox and sheep, camel and donkey. So Saul summoned the people and numbered them in Telaim, two hundred thousand men on foot and two thousand men of Judah. Ten thousand men of Judah, sorry. And Saul came to the city of Amalek and lay in wait in the valley. Then Saul said to the Kenites, Go, depart, go down from among the Amalekites, lest I destroy you with them. For you show, showed kindness to all the people of Israel when they came up out of Egypt. So the Kenites departed from among the Amalekites, and Saul defeated the Amalekites from Hivla <coughs> as far as Shur, which is east of Egypt. And he took Agag, the king of the Amal Amalekites, alive, and devoted to destruction all the people with the edge of the sword. But Saul and the people spared Agag and the best of the sheep and the oxen and the fattened calves and the lambs and all that was good, and would not utterly destroy them. All that was despised and worthless, they devoted to destruction. The word of Yahweh came to Samuel, I regret that I have made Saul king, for he has turned back from following me and has not performed my commandments. And Samuel was ang <coughs> sorry. And Samuel was angry and he cried to Yahweh all night, and Samuel rose early to meet Saul in the morning, and it was told to Samuel Saul came to Carmel, and behold, he set up a monument for himself, and turned and passed on, and went down to Gilgal. And Samuel came to Saul, and Saul said to him, Blessed be you to Yahweh, I have performed the commandments of Yahweh. And Saul said, What then is this bleeding of sheep in my ears, and the lowing of oxen that I hear? Saul said, They have brought them from the Amalekites, for the people spread the best of the sheep and of the oxen, the sacrifice to Yahweh your Elohim. <coughs> And the rest we have devoted to destruction. Then Samuel said to Saul, Stop, I will tell you what Yahweh said to me this night. And he said to him, Speak. And Samuel said, Though you are little in your own ways, are you not the head of the tribes of Israel? Yahweh appointed you king over Israel, and Yahweh sent you on a mission, and said, Go devote to destruction the sinners and Malachites, and fight against them until they are consumed. Why then did you not obey the voice of Yahweh? Why then did you pounce on a spoil and do what was evil in the sight of Yahweh? And Saul said to Samuel, I have obeyed the voice of Yahweh. I have gone on the mission on which Yahweh sent me. I brought Aag, the king of the Malachites, and I have devoted the Malachites to destruction. But the people took of the spoil, sheep and oxen, the best of the things devoted to destruction, a sacrifice to Yahweh your Elohim and Gilgal. And Samuel said, has Yahweh a great delight in burnt offerings or sacrifices as in obeying the voice of Yahweh? Behold, to obey is better than to sacrifice, and to listen than the fat of rams, for rebellion is as a sin of divination, and presumption is as iniquity and idolatry. Because you have rejected the word of Yahweh, he has also rejected you from being king. Saul said to Samuel, I have sinned, for I have transgressed the commandment of Yahweh in your words, because I feared the people and obeyed their voice. Now therefore, please pardon my sin and return with me, that I may bow before Yahweh. And Samuel said to Saul, I will not return with you, for you have rejected the word of Yahweh, and Yahweh has rejected you from being king over Israel. And Samuel turned to go away. Saul seized the skirt of his robe and tore it. <coughs> and Samuel said to him, Yahweh has torn the kingdom of Israel from you this day as he has given it to a neighbor of yours who is better than you. And also the glory of Israel will not lie or have regret, for he is not a man that he should have regret. Then he said, I have sinned, yet honor me now before the elders of my people and before Israel, and return with me that I may bow before Yahweh your Elohim. So Samuel turned back after Saul, and Saul bowed before Yahweh. Then Samuel said, Bring here to me Agag the king of the Malachites, and Agag king to him cheerfully, Agag said, Surely the bitterness of death is past. And Samuel said, As your sword has made you, made women childless, so sh shall your mother be childless among women. And Samuel hacked Agag to pieces before Yahweh and, Gil and Gilgal. Then Samuel went to Ramah, and Saul went up to his house in Gibeah of Saul. <coughs> Thank you.
Blessed art thou, Don Elohim, King of the universe, who gave the Torah of truth and set everlasting life in our midst. Blessed art thou, Don I, give her the Torah, Brukata Don Elohim, Malach Halo, Master Natal, Lenu, Tredi, Met, Vaisi, Elohim, Tabeta, Kenyu, Brukata Don I, Natina, Tara.